Well, good evening, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, good to have you here for our evening worship service. I hope that you had a wonderful Sabbath so far today and that we close it out in our worship time together. As we um, begin, are there any announcements that we need to share? I want to let you know that um, Wednesday night, uh, we're going to have an exciting time for our children. Um, we are going to have games, and they're already setting up stuff over there right now, and I'm going to have games and activities, and we should have a lot of kids here and parents here. And this is a fun thing for our kids, but it'd also be a great outreach event for some kids in the community. So if you know um, some, some kids or, or some grandkids that you have or some neighbors, and um, invite them, invite them, seriously. I mean, think about inviting them to come, because it'll be a fun time, and we'll start at 5.30 and I think it would be a great thing for our kids to be a part of. Also, next Sunday is just a very important worship service as it's All Saints Sunday. And um, as you know, our church um, has um, lost a lot of saints this year. And uh, we, you know, we hope to honor them well this coming Sunday because we um, are standing on their shoulders as a church. We know many of them um, have left voids that we just simply can't fill or haven't filled yet. And uh, we want to remember them. So as we're... Pr as we're um, Praying this week, just remember those families and you know, just remember, you know, quite often we um, ha have a death in the church and we spend time with the family and pray for them and then we leave and, you know, uh, uh, then we just kind of go on with our lives and they do too, but that pain is still there with them and they deal with it and um, we want to, you know, be mindful of that as we honor them. But anyways, a few things come going on um, in the life of the church the next week, next week or so. Is there anything we want to share here? Any uh, announcements? Thank you, yes. I meant to say that. No Bible study this Wednesday night. Um, we're going to have, you know, hang out with the kids. Y'all so come anyways. We'll have hamburgers, we'll have candy, and we'll have kids to play with. So that'd be a lot of fun. Hey, Josh. Yep. Um, hey, well, don't forget this Saturday is the Community Music Festival. It's going to run all day long and all kinds of different uh, music groups. Um, unfortunately, we're not going to be a part of it this year. I am planning on being a part of it next year. But that's all day Saturday. Um, and I believe it's just right over there. Today, isn't it? Or are they moving? No, we're here. We're in the Williams and Right. And there's going to be some groups from out of town and some local folks. The Andy Johnson's going to sing and some other folks. So that'll be really terrific. That. That's Halloween day as well, so it'll be a good event for the family to, to go be a part of. All right, anything else? Okay, well, as we begin today, we're going to begin with prayer. And um, what we'll do is I will um, say a prayer. And um, in the middle of that prayer, I'll um, have a moment where we pause. And that'll be a chance for you. If you have a concern, if you have a person that you'd like to lift up in worship, uh, please just simply lift up their name and if there's a brief description of what's going on with them uh, you can uh, do that as well okay let's pray God thank you for allowing us to come back again tonight to worship you although we are so grateful for the opportunity that we have to come and be shaped by your word to be encouraged by uh, good hymns of the faith and to be comforted in our prayers as we know that you are with us uh, God, we trust that you are present as we worship tonight. And God, as we worship, we have concerns on our hearts and minds. Uh, there are people that we love dearly, people that are going through some difficult times in life, um, at, even at this moment. And Lord, we lift those names and concerns up to you now. My sister, Amy. God, you have heard the concerns of your people. Now, as we worship you, we pray that you will receive our praises. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Well, all right, let's sing a little bit. Take out your hymn books, and we haven't sung this in a long time. Take your hymn books out and turn to 733. <clears throat> 
Seven? Uh, yeah, the old, I'm sorry. The normal, the normal ones, the blue ones. You're right, Jimmy, sorry about that. Did I really say normal? The, the regular Methodist hymnal. 733, we're marching to Zion. And we'll do all four verses. <laughs>
as we uh, prepare to, to offer our offering this evening to God. God, thank you so much that the church, the church's foundation is Jesus Christ, our Lord. It's not our works. It's not our gifts. But it's you. So God, as we offer our gifts this evening, we're not doing it to do your work because you are already at work in the world. No, God, you have allowed us to participate in that work. So we give tonight to do just that. God, receive our offerings, bless and use them for your kingdom's sake. In Christ's name, amen. Cena and Neil, thank you for sharing your gift of music this evening. Okay, well, uh, tonight I thought we would just have some final thoughts on Job. I don't know if you're Jobed out yet or not, but you know, we're about to move past this depressing book in the Bible. Uh, no, I think it's actually a hopeful book, and, um, but we're going to have some final thoughts on it. But before we do that, um, we already offered prayer requests this evening. Do we have any good news to share about anything? Any good news? Well, I do want to thank you all for uh, praying for my mom. She, uh, she was doing, uh, doing well. Um, some circumstances in her life have caused her to adjust. Uh, she is living in her house by herself. And, uh, 
and some other things. She's recuperating very well from feelings, issues that I have rather than not spill the beans. Um, but she's doing very well. But please keep on following your prayers. Um, she's allowing us kids to help her, which is a real struggle for her. She remains very committed and minded, and she brings her age to her but she now realizes that, you know, something that I can help her to help you. Okay. Anybody else? Good news. That is true. And we need to be praying for those people facing those hur that hurricane as well. You're right about that. Thankful that we're dry at the moment, but in prayer that um, those folks are don't face devastation because what they're, what they're going through. That's right. Thank you. Ron. Anybody else? <clears throat> they still don't know. Okay. And he's feeling fine. Well, that is good news. Wonderful. Okay. Anybody else? Good news. All right. Well, that's, that is good news. And I ask this um, every single Sunday night, or just about every Wednesday night, or every Sunday night, because, you know, I think it's good to be constantly thinking, what's good in my life right now? What's some good news? Because it seems like the, the bad things scream in life. They scream. They're always getting our attention, and, and we're always focusing on those bad things. And quite often, to the neglect of all that God's already doing in our life. You know, all the good things that God is doing. And that doesn't mean we... You know, just kind of gloss over the bad things that's happening. But the bad things get our, our attention a lot more than the good things. And I, this is a practice for me too. You know, what's some good news? What's good going on in my life as well? So it's a good practice. But I just want us to have just some final thoughts on the book of Job. And um, I hope you have questions um, that, that you might have about the book. Not necessarily questions that I'm going to be able to answer. But maybe questions that we can ask and just kind of keep us thinking um, about this, this strange book that we've been looking at, um, um, this 42 chapters of, of strangeness that we have been uh, reading through. So if you have those, I'd like you to, you know, as we discuss tonight, share those with, with us and maybe we can talk about them. But let's begin by, this kind of goes along with what we talked about today. You know, Job was waiting on God to speak, waiting and waiting to hear from God. And I wonder, how does God speak to you? Now, you know, we, God speaks through a lot of different ways. And I just wonder, because we're always listening for God. You know, what's God's will? What's God trying to say to me? You know, how is God speaking in my life? And I'm wondering, how have you found, because many of you have been a, a faithful Christian much longer than me, um, some much, much longer than me. And I'm just wondering, how, you know, in your, in your time as a Christian, how have you found where have you found God's voice to be? Where have you heard from God? So let's say that again. So as you serve, you okay? All right. Anybody else? Through nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm a, I say, I, 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 I don't say that I'm a deer hunter, but I do hunt sometimes. <laughs> and just, for me, it's not about killing a deer, it's about just sitting and just getting away from my cell phone and from kids and, you know, <laughs> just sitting in a stand and just being, because I have felt, you know, a connection to God and, and that, I guess it's nature and, and it's just God's creation. And um, you're right, that's, that's a good one. Any others? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Upper Room. How many of you read The Upper Room? Okay, yeah, and I, I get an email every morning. And, uh, yeah, it is quite often. It's, how many of you have been published in The Upper Room? Anybody? Didn't, didn't y'all do that a while back? Where our church, um, I think it was um, the pastor before... Um, Rodney, what was his name? He's in, he's in Douglas right now. 
Sam. I think, uh, yeah, I think he encouraged y'all maybe one Lent to write devotions. Are is this not ringing a bell to anybody? Maybe it's right. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So I was just curious. And I think he, uh, that was what Martha was telling. Maybe I misunderstood that. But yeah, upper room, devotional. Anybody else? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Is there just a peace that comes over you? Or? Right. Okay. Anybody else? <laughs> That's it. That's right. Anybody else? How does God speak to you? Well, let me just share a few things that I that I think Job um, that we learn from Job's life and his struggle from hearing from God, and then eventually God speaks to him. I think that we see that God speaks to us from different places. And of course, the Bible is, is one of them, I believe. But I'm glad y'all didn't say that because, you know, we, that's always the first answer. You know, in seminary, um, the answer to every question, if you said Jesus, you got it right. So I'm glad y'all thought beyond that. And, um, but yeah, so now there was, a, um, there was about 35 chapters of just Job and his friends just trying to make sense of their suffering. And then we get to verse 38. And then it says this, Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Answered Job from the whirlwind. And I think that's very interesting, the whirlwind. Now what does that mean, the whirlwind? Some translations uh, translated that storm. And some have been translated in, in various other ways. And if you've got your Bible, flip to it and tell me what your translation says. Mine says whirlwind. And um, if yours says something different, shout it out to me. Out of the storm. Okay, and that's the uh, New Revised, I think. Is that right? Out of the storm. Yeah. New International. Okay. All right, anybody got anything different? From the storm. Um, there are other ways. Um, some think it might be from God's anger. Because that word had been translated in another place in the Old Testament from God. But I think from the storm is a good, way of, a good way of understanding it. And really what it's saying is that God speaks to us from different challenges in our life. When we are facing challenges, God can speak in the midst of that. Let me share a quote from C.S. Lewis. Are y'all familiar with C.S. Lewis? He's a great writer. I encourage you to read. Um, he wrote a book called, <coughs> excuse me, he wrote a book called, I think the title was The Problem with Pain. And he talks quite a bit about, I mean, a very profound book on, on the idea of pain. But in that book, he says this. Pain insists upon being attended to. Pain insists upon being attended to. He goes on. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks to us in our consciences, but shouts to us in our pain. It is his megaphone to arouse a deaf world. God shouts to us in our pain. You know, sometimes it's when we are facing pain that God has our attention, right? God has our attention the most. And obviously, in Job's situation, and, and Job's a, um, you know, Job was a godly man from the get-go, but whenever he was really facing this challenge in his life, his attention was focused, right? He was really focused on God. Now, that doesn't mean that God creates these bad things to happen in your life so that you'll just stop and pay attention to him. But in our pain, that is a moment when we really are listening. Okay, God, what's going on? In that whirlwind, okay, God, I'm here. I'm ready to listen. What is it that you, what is it that you have, have to say to me? So God sometimes speaks to us in a storm. I want to share just a few others that I thought. God also speaks through the marginalized. The marginalized. I shared with you my story this morning going to Grand Avenue uh, this past week in Kansas City and just 
how I felt God just clearly speaking to me as I watched these homeless people gather together as the church, embracing each other, loving each other, so grateful to have a church family uh, to call home, you know, people that they live life with. You know, their relationship with the church was really life or death. I mean, that church family literally was a way that they stayed alive. And when's the last time you thought about your church family like that? When's the last time that you thought this group of people, you know, they're a good group. I like hanging out with them maybe once a week. But when have you thought, you know, my relationship to other believers is a matter of life or death? Now, it might not be, we might not find our next meal from this group. But as I mentioned, you know, we're all, we, we all have our own poverty. All of us have, what's some poverties other than money? Or other than, um, yeah, what's some other types of poverty? Okay. No, no way to get from point A to point B? What's some other, what, what's another way of, what, what's some other types of poverty? Okay, a poverty of um, maybe time. <laughs> yeah. Spiritual poverty, right? Sometimes we, our souls just aren't, you know, we, you know, we're not where we need to be. You know, sometimes some of us have poverty in our relationships with other people. You know, maybe a friend we have poverty with. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a church that one of my friends grew up going to. And... Um, Small church, you know, smaller than this one, 60 on Sundays, probably something like that. And there were two sides in the pew. And one side, and to make a long story short, there were two men in the church who went into business together. And something happened, and they made each other mad, and the business broke apart. And I don't know if one of them took somebody else's business or whatever, I don't know the whole story. Anyways, they went to the same church. One sat on this side with their family, one sat on this side with their family. This had been going on for like 30 years. They didn't speak a word to each other for 30 years. They worshiped in the same building together, but did not speak a word to each other. Can you, I just, a small church, can you imagine? Can you imagine somebody coming here for 30 years and not speaking to each other? Anyways, that's, that's a poverty of relationship. There's, there's poverty there. And I don't know that they realize that, but there are multiple places of poverty. And I think that seeing these people relying on each other for, for life just really spoke to me about how important uh, the body of Christ is. You know, the marginalized. <clears throat> you know, I've heard God speak clearly to me <clears throat> in just multiple places where I've been helping. Um, there's a place that I went to called A Place for Hope where I think I shared this with you in a sermon where um, I was doing a devotion with this group of people who um, were, some, most of them were homeless. Many of, this was in Albany. Many of them were just down on their luck and needed a place to come and get a cup of coffee and a breakfast. And I remember leading a devotion for them. And after I left there, I realized that those people knew God more than I did. Uh, those people knew the Bible better than I did. And I think, that, um, I think that the reason that's the case is because the impoverished, the, 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 those who are in poverty, the impoverished, is that the word I'm looking for? The marginalized, the poor, children, that's where God is. People in the hospitals, that's where God is. God is there in a significant and a real way. And I believe that we can find God. You know, if, if, if someone ever were to ask me, how many of you have been in a place where you just felt like you couldn't feel God? You felt like you were praying and your prayer didn't get above, you know, above your head. Have you ever felt that way before? You know, if someone were to ask me, how do I, you know, I, I'm, I, I feel like when I pray, it's not getting anywhere. I feel like God's not with me anymore. Where can I find God? You know, somebody would say, go to the church. That's where you find God. Go to the church. God is there. I believe that. But for me, if I got to that place, I think that uh, I'm going to go with what Ethel said. I think that if I ever get a place where for days and days and days I don't feel God's presence, I'm going to go to maybe a soup kitchen or go to um, maybe a nursing home or go to somewhere where people are really struggling because I believe that it's at those places where God, you can really, really find God's presence. You can really find God at work among those people. All right, any, any thoughts on that? Places where God speaks. 
Okay. Imagine that you have five minutes with God. God shows up one Sunday, and he goes, he, he's going to be in the, um, the children's Sunday school class, and he says, okay, Josh, every one of your members gets five minutes with me this morning. Okay? We're all standing in line. We're all waiting to get our five minutes with God. What question do you ask God? What question would you ask him? <coughs> Excuse me. Put you on the spot, huh? I probably should say what questions, because we probably got a lot of questions, but I'm just curious. What would you ask him? I bet one of us would, would ask him what Job's been asking <laughs> for 35 chapters. You know, why, does bad, why do bad things happen to good people? What about you? What would you ask him? Y'all don't have a list of things to ask God when you get to heaven? Maybe not a public one. <laughs> Bring the... Yeah, you're right about that. Sometimes we do. You're right. Anybody? How did it all start? How did it all start? I would, know, I would have a lot of questions about things, but I think I did uh, all discriminate. Okay. <laughs> That's all right. That'll work too. Oh. oh. Can he bring us back? Okay. All right question about our country. Yeah. Anybody else? Think about that. He might, he might show up one Sunday. You know, we might cancel church in here and might say, okay, God's over there. And, um, you know, I bet you got a long list for Santa Claus coming up in December. <laughs> That's easy, huh? <laughs> you know, it's interesting. But I asked that question because Job had all these questions for God too, right? Job had all these questions for God. But whenever God shows up, God does not answer those questions. God doesn't answer them. And instead, God reveals himself to, to Job. God reveals who he is. And, you know, I talk a lot about my boys. And, um, and you know, they, I remember at Porterfield, there were about seven sermons in a row that I talked about something about some of my boys. That, some, my, a story about my, my children and that's just kind of where I'm at these days and that's where my mind goes but you know when, when we went to Pigeon Forge um, a couple of weeks ago for a wedding and I mean Kay talked and he asked questions for, 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 for eight hours non-stop I mean he didn't stop for eight hours non-stop and you know finally you just get to where you're like yes no okay sure and you're just trying to get him to just move on to the next thing and finally stop. And then you give him, you know, your iPad and say, maybe this keep him quiet for a little while. You know, we were those parents that said, you know, I'm not going to give my kids electronics because, you know, I'm going to be a good parent. Well, that changed. But anyways, you know, I wonder, I wonder if that's how God feels sometimes. You know, we're constantly asking these questions and, you know, just question and question and question and question. I wonder if he just gets, you know, <clears throat> to the point where, uh, he doesn't have us an iPad to keep us quiet. But I wonder if perhaps we're often asking the wrong questions. And I wonder if instead God, instead of wanting to answer our question, God is wanting to reveal himself to us. God is wanting to reveal who he is to us. Because see, that's, that's what the Christian faith is about. That's what prayer is about. Prayer is about learning who God is. And prayer is about learning who we are as people of God. So quite often, you know, I think spiritual maturity is not necessarily gaining more knowledge, but it's learning to ask those appropriate questions of God. Learning to ask questions that really push us in the right direction. You know, I think that's um, something that, you know, Job was trying to learn, you know, about his righteousness. You know, God, I was good. Why did this happen to me? <clears throat> But God was wanting to remind Job, remember, I'm in control. Remember, I am in control. Everything's going to be okay because I'm in control. 
All right, any thoughts on that? And one more point that I wanted to kind of close out, <coughs> excuse me, kind of our time uh, uh, um, in the book of Job with, and this is a point that I made this morning, and that, that is that God is moving all things towards a good end. Wayne, I hope that's good news for you for your question. God is moving all things toward a good end. As bad as this book was, it ends on a good note. I mean, it, now that, now, chapter 42 is not fooling anybody because no matter how many sheep and donkeys and chickens or whatever kind of animals he got, no matter how many more children he had, that does not replace the pain that he experienced, you know, the pain of losing a child. I mean, that's, you know, devastating. But it does end on a, posit on a positive note. And, you know, I think Wayne's question is one that um, kind of reflects all of our fears that we have. You know, what, what are your thoughts about the future? You know, when you look to the future, what do you see? Now, I don't want to get political here. I don't want us to take sides politically or anything. But when you look into the future, do you see hope? Do you see devastation? You know, what, what are your thoughts about the future? Oh, man. Okay. Right. I think the prosperity gospel um, is a hopeful gospel. Um, the, the prosperity gospel is a, a gospel that suggests that things in this world are going to be good Monet uh, monetarily and financially and lives. I mean, the, 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 the prosperity gospel would look at Job 42. And say, look, you're going through a tough time right now. But eventually God's going to bring you out of it. And he's going to bless you threefold what I gave you in, what I gave you in the first place. So that, the God, prosperity gospel would, would, would root salvation in what we get, what we receive. Yeah. Um, Gosh, I look at the situation. We're in the fall now. Okay. You see a hopeful future. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
Okay? I like that hopeful future. Anybody else? Tristan, did I, I mean, did, did I, did you get, was your question answered or I don't know if it was a question or? Well, let me, let me say this and maybe, because I think being Christian, and now I'm not the authority on all the, I mean, please, <laughs> trust me, I'm not, but I think being a Christian is, 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 is learning to live with questions. And I really struggle with um, areas in the faith or movements in the faith that suggest that they have what happens in the end all figured out and, um, and, and, and quite often when we look, well, quite often Christianity becomes avoiding this, you know, get saved so that you don't burn, you know, burn in hell. Or, um, you know, using hell as a, um, I want to say persuasion, but what motivation. And that's not to say that there should be fear before God. I'm not suggesting that there's not. But, I mean, throughout the scriptures, I mean, God is embracing. I mean, look at Jesus' ministry. I mean, he's reaching out to people who are hurting and broken. And then they accept Christ. And then as they're in relationship with God, then their lives begin to change. So why, why do we want people to change their life before coming to know Christ? You know, and being embraced by Christ, being a part of the church, that, that comes first. And then, you know, then let God change, change us. You know, I'm still being transformed. You know, I mean, hopefully, hopefully, if not, I'm in trouble. You know, so I think my, my point with that is that, you know, let the world see a hopeful message from the church. You know, I know y'all have seen those signs going by churches, you know, that are just depressing. I mean, just... I don't know where that theology came from. But, you know, of course there is accountability in the church. There's, you know, God demands, has high demands for his people. But that first step is, is, is just taking that first step and just being embraced by God. And, and Christ went after people. You know, people didn't necessarily, you know, have it all together before they came to him. So that's kind of the point I was trying to make. And I think some of these, show, I, I used left behind this morning. Um, because I think it's just bad theology, number one. But number two, there's, you know, I've, there, there's an element of fear in that too. <laughs> if you've seen the movies, then you'll, you'll see that. But that's the point I was making. Um, the story of Job suggests, and I know we're going way over time here, but the story of Job suggests that things end with hope. And we have hope. And as, as much as we hear non-hope in the world... Man, can we be the people that offers that hope? And that hope is rooted in Jesus. And we have that hope. And it's so often, I don't know that the people see that when they look at the church. I think they see, um, you know, walls that are put up. And but man, if we could just offer hope for people. Um, you know, how wonderful, how, how many people would want to come then if they knew that there's hope there? But anyways, all right. That's really all I, I wanted to say. Is there anything, any other thoughts? Well, I hope you got a little bit out of Job, out of the book of Job. I think there's good news to be said in it. And I hope that you could keep reading, reading that book for yourself. But as we close out, let's pray. God, thank you so much for this gift that we have in Job's story. A man who went through so many difficult things. And as we hear his story, some of us also see our story in his story. Many of us have gone through tough things. Many of us may be going through tough things right now. But God, we're thankful that no matter what we face, you are always present with us and that in the end, you make all things new. God, send us out of here tonight to be people of good news. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank y'all. Good night.